The walls are finally melting. And Ranbu stopped feeling his hands a while ago, by the time he makes it back to their room that night. Trips inside and shrugs his jacket off onto the floor. Might actually be passing out before he even gets to his bunk. He never dreams. Whether it's a byproduct of how strung out for sleep he is on a regular basis, or because his waking life is plagued by nightmares enough, doesn't matter. Rambu couldn't care less, is grateful to get any time where his mind is shut off, and blissfully silent for once, giving him a chance to recover for whenever he wakes up. So there's not really a clear gauge for how long it's been between when Rambu got back and when he's feeling a hot touch at his shoulder. Just an all-consuming darkness that's starting to recede. Sensory inputs filtering back into a sluggish mind. Scratchy sheets pressing into face. Feet asleep? Boots still on. Oopsie doopsie. Tacky taste in mouth. Throat sore, screaming, fighting. Oh, ancients, everything hurts. Um, warm hands on you. Fingers brushing at your hair. Machine oil and our soap. And something sweet. Lavender, maybe. Fingers down face now. And Ronbu tips into the touch unthinkingly. Makes a rumbling sound deep in his chest and hears a quiet laugh in response. And it's so warm and affectionate. Incredible fondness slipping out with each giggle. Has him thinking about dimples and mischievous eyes and a star in his arms. Words leaving without his permission in a half-coherent mumble. Mm, that's all I want to hear for the rest of Forever Sunshine. Love you. Love you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, I understand completely. A voice teases in light mirth. The fingers that were carting through his bangs moving away, and Rambu makes a whiny noise protesting, gets another laugh for his troubles. Come on, you lump. You need to get up, eat something, dust yourself off or whatever. I'm so tired, though. Stay with me, sunshine. Stay for me, and I'll stay for you. Rambu whispers into his pillows, exhaustion weighing him down and enticing him back towards sleep, and there's an affectionate tongue click, the voice sighing in mock exasperation. Time to get up, boo boy. It's been like sixteen hours. You need food. Come on. Up, up. Heat curls through him, where hands wrap around one of his arms, searing into the bare skin as they tug at him, and he hums sleepily, already nuzzling back down. Star in your arms, soft rise and fall of his chest, lavender fields and sunny skies. The voice sounding like it means it more this time, when it huffs. Seriously, come on, you have to get up. Boo? Queen's past, I swept. Ron, boo! And Rambu sits bolt upright, head swimming with how fast he moved and he slumps to the side, nasty headache blooming to life behind his eyes that makes him hiss, pressing fingers into his temples. Despite the pounding in his head, his mind is already wide awake and ready to go, now immediately connecting what he thought was another specter to the reality of Tubbo, crouched by his bunkside, unhappy tilt to his mouth, and Rambu panics. Did he hear? Of course he did. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Did you really say all of that out loud? Shit, 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 shit. Fix it, idiot. I'm trying, okay? Stop yelling. Well, do it faster, you incompetent moron. Tubbo, look, I, I, I it, it's not, I, um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't mean a any, um, sorry, so sorry. I, Rambu stammers out too fast, feels like he's falling backwards off the parapets. Freefall embracing him as he hurtles to the ground, nothing to grab onto, nothing to ground himself with, and his claws flex spastically. Stupid. Idiot. Can't speak even. It's not that hard. Never listen. Right over the edge. No hesitation. Hey, Boo. Hey, calm down. It's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everything's fine. Tubbo hushes, moving forwards and linking their hands together others going up to touch at his arm or rest near his bent legs. So many points of contact it makes Rambu's head spin. It was just a nightmare, okay? It wasn't real. It can't hurt you. 
and I'm here anyway, I'd kick its ass. Nightmare? What is he talking about? I just confessed. What's... And Rambu's brow furrows in confusion, until his mind helpfully plays back the last few minutes. And he realizes, oh, he apparently defaulted to Enderian in his half-awake stupor. And Tubbo isn't Ender. It's okay. He didn't understand. He doesn't know. He just thinks you had a bad dream. You're safe. You're okay. You can breathe. R right. R right. Uh, nightmare. Rambu plays along, hunches over until he can rest his forehead on his raised knees, and takes a few deep breaths, unwinding more when Tubbo starts rubbing two hands across his shoulders, leaving tingling fire trails behind that make all the hair on the back of his neck and tail stand on end. Do you want to talk about it? Tubbo asks in soft sympathy, and Rambu almost snorts, because what a minefield that'd be. Nothing he could use that wouldn't worry Tubbo or trip his reflex guilt over what happened with the raiders. So he shakes his head and lies. I don't really know. It, it, it was very dark and confusing and I couldn't find you. Yeah. Nice, generic, basic enough not to cause any problems, but not an outright... I don't remember, which Tubbo would never believe. And it seems to work, Tubbo dragging him into a quick side hug. I'm sorry, Boo. I know how much nightmares suck, even the non-specific ones. No kidding. As if that's not the understatement of the year. Tubbo has horrible nightmares sometimes. Ones that make him wake up screaming and haunt him well into the daylight hours. But it's getting better, Rambu thinks. He doesn't really want to attribute it solely to him, but Rambu can't sleep anyway, and if Tubbo starts fidgeting, he can usually get him calmed back down again before he wakes himself up. Sometimes all Rambu has to do is sit by his bunk and trail careful fingers across his arm, scratch lightly through his hair. But other times, if that doesn't work, he'll sing the lullaby his mother used to hum for him when she lay dying. Rambu doesn't think he has a particularly nice voice. And Endyrion is strange, echoing in weird places, but for whatever reason, it works. Settles Tubbo easier than anything. He's never mentioned it to him, though. Because Rambu doesn't want to come across like he's fishing for favors, or like Tubbo owes him something. He's more than happy to do it. Anything he can to make Tubbo's life that much easier. And besides just not sleeping while out on missions, Tubbo seems perkier these days more energetic and inclined to mischief. Rambu thinks back to the last time he remembers Tubbo having chronic dark circles, and it was over a month ago, when he had a few really bad weeks, swamped with memories from New Dawn and the Academy. But he got past it, bowled through everything with that internal strength Rambu was so in awe of. Tubbo is such an incredible person, wicked smart in a way Rambu could never be, Mind geared towards solving puzzles and fitting pieces and parts back together. Not just memorizing information without really understanding anything. And he may act like he's too tough for it, but Tubbo's one of the kindest, most tender-hearted people Rambu's ever known. Cares so much for his friends and family, for people in need. And it feels silly sometimes, but Rambu really looks up to him. Hopes he can someday be a fraction of who he is. Hey, if you're feeling up to it, you really need to eat, Tubbo tells him gently, guiding Rambu out of his winding hallways with an easy touch. So kind, so genuine, just everything you're not. Hands still splayed across his back and burning through his shirt. You slept for most of the day, and I know you didn't get dinner last night. Rambu wants to try and defend himself, but his stomach answers for him making a series of strange, warping noises that could almost pass for really accented, horribly butchered Endyrion. Sounds something like defervescence, and he huffs out a laugh. Y yeah yeah that'd, um, that'd probably be a good idea. Good man, Tepo says cheerily, slaps him on the back like he'd do any other day, but the impact jars all of Rambu's aches and pains that have been quietly simmering in the background. They come roaring to life now, hitting him like a train, and he groans. Works his shoulders to try alleviating some of it. Feels Tubbo's hands leave him lightning quick and mourns their loss. 
Shit, are you okay? Tubbo demands, wringing both sets of hands together nervously, antenna twitching up and down a little. Is it from the other day? Sorry, I didn't know you'd hurt yourself that bad. I, no, 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 it's okay. I, um, I met Dream for uh, some hand-to-hand -hand training last night. Rambu says in trepidation, liar, liar, all you do is lie. Shut up. Knows what's probably coming and glances at Tubbo warily. Don't understand why you keep doing this. He pushes you too hard. I'm going to talk to him. He's got to lay off. The way his eyes darken and brows draw down. Storm on the horizon. But he keeps his mouth pressed into a thin line and just blows air hard out of his nose. I'm okay, promise. Just a little sore. Um, Wanna go get breakfast? Or, I guess, dinner now? Rambu tips his head to the side and tries to hide behind his hair. But Tubbo's on his left, and his bangs fall down across the right, leaving him exposed, which is... Unfortunate. How could such a thing happen in the royal bloodline? Must be a mistake. Must be a fluke. The one bad seed that made it through the gap. Arches coldly through his ears, like the long stride of sturdy boots across the study's floor. Impossibly straight line of her spine. And Rambu swallows hard, blinks a few times, and goes back to their dorm. To his shitfest half of the room, and Tubbo's militarily organized side, telling himself, Breathe. You're okay. You're here. You're not there. She's not real. Get it together. Yeah, all right. Tubbo sighs, pushing to his feet, holds a hand out for Ronbu, and he takes it gladly. Let's Tubbo help haul him up, but instead of lacing their fingers like he really wants, their hands drop apart quickly, leaving his palms cold and empty feeling. Ronbu blinks at the sharp lights out in the hallway once the door swishes open has to stand leaning up against the wall while his pupils contract all the way down, not accustomed to so much bright light all the time. And he scrubs a palm into an itchy socket, trailing along after Tubbo. Given the time, it's not a surprise how busy their hall is as they head towards the cafeteria, music pouring loudly and discordantly out of several open doors. High-pitched shrieking followed by a crash that Rambu has come to learn means Halil just lost some game to their partner. Lukiko strutting past in nothing but a towel as he leaves the showers. Someone hurling balled-up trash at him from their room that sparks a well-meaning shouting match. It's different, being here. Nothing like what he was used to. Dimly lit hallways and clusters of courtiers whispering behind the flickering shape of fans. Eyes that always knew how to watch without looking. Stiff backs and perfectly bland faces. Everyone on their toes all the time, dancing around one another, trying to find weak spots and guard their own. Rambu knew not to expect the same thing when he decided to go with Tubbo. Recognized the differences between the royal court and the syndicate, but thought that instead of insults behind your back, it'd be threats in your face. Cracking knuckles and tests of strength to settle arguments. A bunch of dangerous people, all stuck in close quarters and tiptoeing past each other. Together because they had to be. He couldn't have been more wrong. It's chaos. Colorful, disorganized, caring chaos. It's hands on your shoulder, or arms dragging you in closer, asking if you're okay, if you're doing alright, and meaning it. It's arguments that don't end in fistfights, but play-wrestling. Voices singing loud and impassioned to music coming from someone else's room. Open doors and open smiles. Hearts worn proudly on sleeves like there's nothing to be afraid of by showing what you care about. Rambu had whiplash for the first few weeks. Thinks he still might. Dodging eyes like he was taught. Uncomfortable at all of the attention directed at him. Keep your face blank. Don't give them anything. Don't give them reason to hurt you. Walking close at Tubbo's side and inclining his head fractionally when their neighbors call out to both of them. Tubbs! Ran! How's it going? Majapi calls while she's jogging past, clearly late for something and not waiting for an answer as she disappears down the hall with a wave. Long, trailing tails, the last thing flicking around the corner. What's up, you two? How you been? Befian asks on their way back into their room. 
does a complicated handshake with Tubbo that involves all six of their arms and all four of his. Leaves Rambu reeling, trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> hey, small, hey, tall, y'all going to dinner? Elov says with an easy grin that splits wide up the sides of his face, bearing bright red molars and inky gums, flickering light of all eight of his eyes jumping and dancing as Tubbo says something back that makes him laugh. And unlike Anwil, their interest is genuine. They mean it, they do. But Rambu has a hard time convincing his mind of that, sits and watches helplessly as it starts pulling information and filing it away for later use against his will. Majibi. Absent-minded. She'd be easy to take advantage of and convince of things that never happened. Befian. Dexterous. They'd be dangerous with a dagger, so you should strike first before they can. Elav. Affable. Eager to please. Learn how to make him laugh and he'll be a good lackey. Dull-witted and easily manipulated. Stop it! Rambu screams, seeing the pages fly past with his... Colleagues, co-workers, neighbors. Information on it. Reaches out and rips them from the air, shredding everything apart with his claws, but it doesn't matter. The ideas are there, laid out all nice and neat. A battle plan he refuses to follow. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? He thinks in horror, panic slowly beginning to ease in, like the tickling of wind high along the parapets of Voidfall. Tugging at his clothes, at his hair... Why are you like this? Why do you want to hurt them? What have they ever done, terrible person? Creaking rattle of chains. Bodies slamming against doors, hungry to be let out. Monstrous thing. Nothing good in you never was. No hesitation over the... Hey, so, um... So it's gonna be midsummer in a few days. On my planet, I mean. And Rambu snaps out of his head so fast focusing on the welcome distraction of Tubbo fidgeting next to him, lower set of his hands picking at his jacket and upper ones fiddling with each other. Apide, you know, where I'm from? Dark eyes glance up in his direction, checking to see if he's listening, and Rambu always is, would gladly listen to anything Tubbo ever had to tell him, watches his antenna bob sharply as their eyes meet, Anyway, we usually, um, like, my hometown at least, but we, like, have a party. That's nice. Rambu says stupidly, cringes inwardly, and tries to think past all the banging and rattling he wishes would calm down. Um, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. Are you going? Y yeah. I was thinking of going home for a few days, enjoy the celebrations, see my family, and... And he's not going to ask you to go along. Leave you here, like so much unwanted garbage. Just like I never wanted you. Just like your mother never. Get out! Rambu shrieks, swinging a fist at the specter looming off his left, and it disappears like curling smoke, reforming around his clenched hand, and sucks in a breath. And uh, I was wondering if, um, if you wanted to go with me? And it's gone, and the doors are silent, and Rambu almost trips where he's walking. Did he just... No way. Nothing works, but no, he said... He asked. What? Boggling at Tubbo like he didn't hear him right. You want me... To go with you? I... Uh... Yeah? Tubbo stammers, flicking his eyes away, and Rambu's heart jumps into his throat. No, I'm sorry. Please look at me. I didn't mean... I'm here. Why? But they're back almost instantly like Tubbo made the conscious effort to fight his reflexes, says a lot more sure. I want you to come spend midsummer with me. I think it'd be a lot of fun, that you'd have a lot of fun, but if you don't want to, I'd totally get it. He wants you to go. Wants you to be there. He wants you around. What a novelty. What a precious thing. And Rambu's vision swims lightheaded, heavy comfort settling in his limbs, keeping him here keeping him grounded by knowing he is wanted and cared for, murmurs out a wavering, y Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. The smile Tubbo gives him could rival any main sequence star, stretching wide enough both dimples show up in his cheeks, crinkling his dark eyes with laugh lines. Yeah? Uh, okay, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be great. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. There's dancing and drinking and... Tebo suddenly gasps, set of hands flying up to squish his cheeks together, boundless excitement and joy shining in his eyes. You get to meet Benson! A slideshow of images pops up in Rambu's head then, all of them containing the black and yellow fuzzball that is Tubbo's family pet. A bombini, something that looked part canine, part gigantic bee. And he smiles slow at how excited Tubbo is, nodding his head as he agrees. I get to meet Benson. Yo, oh, this is going to be amazing. Dude, I haven't been home in ages. Like, last time I was there for my birthday, maybe? Queens, that's been a while. Tebo chatters happily, bouncing along at Rambu's side while they head into the mess hall, both of them getting into the same line for the replicator. Rambu hadn't had much replicated food before joining the syndicate, and it's not that bad. Okay, he's lying. It's horrible. Nothing the machine spits out even coming close to what the original dish is. And yes, he has high standards, but Rambu feels like they're justified this time. He hems and haws over what to pick, nose wrinkled slightly, tabbing through all the inadequate options. Hears a foot tapping behind him and lashes his tail back, smirks when he hears an indignant squawk. Rude, Tubbo insists, but Rambu can hear the smile clear in his voice, swats him again one more time for good measure, and picks his garbage for the evening, declaring... The conditions I'm forced to suffer under here are unjust, and frankly, borderline inhumane. And I will not stand for any maligning of my character, nor- Oh, piss off! Tubbo laughs, shoving Rambu out of the way, the arm that goes around his waist not falling away immediately. And Rambu shivers, frozen in place, staring dumbly as Tubbo types in his order, only spurred back into moving when those night-dark eyes flick up to him in question. He scrambles off with his tray of food to where the drink machines are, double-checks making sure he's getting the right pH water, trying to steer his mind off replaying those few seconds when Tubbo had an arm around him, but it doesn't work, thinks he can still feel it burning under his jacket. Ancients, Rambu could really use a distraction right now. Hey, Ran Boozle! And nope, he's changed his mind illogically tries to duck and hide, despite the fact he's one of the taller species here. Ends up standing slouched against the side of the drink machine as Ozzy bounds up to him, tries to play it off like he's casually reclining and not attempting to avoid them. Hello? Didn't, uh, didn't see you there. Oh, are you playing ragdoll? Let me have a go. Ozzy says like that makes any sense, and Rambu doesn't even get a chance to ask them what that is before their head rotates 180 disturbingly empty neck socket right in his eyes as they chitter in deranged amusement. Ancients below... Ozzy, put your head back. Rambu whines. Already wasn't looking forward to eating his dinner, but now his appetite's really turned. Nose wrinkling, watching their skull crack back into place. Toothy mouth still running. Huh? Oh, sorry, do you have a thing with, like, like the holes and stuff? Uh, uh, um... Tripticus trigonometry, trailblazers, trigonometrix, trypophobia. Rambu supplies, only so they'll shut up. And Ozzy snaps, somehow, pointing bony finger guns at him as the glowing eye winks. That's the bitch! Departed, you've got quite the head, Ram. Wish I could say the same, but mine's not screwed on right. Ayo! Ozzy's skull rotates in a fast circle dispersing their shadowy ears and cocks to the side in a perpetual grin. Hands flipping out with their fingers spread wide apart. Real smile. And Rambu snorts. Can't stop himself finding amusement in their antics. One of these days your skull's gonna fly off doing that. You think? Ozzy chirps, sounding horribly excited by the idea. Admittedly, it's a funny thought. Their long, muzzled skulls spinning off from where it floats over their shoulders like a runaway top, pinging and bouncing off furniture as it goes. And Rambu ducks his head with a cough, masking the involuntary giggle he makes. When he looks up, though, he sees Tubbo staring at him from across the mess hall, funny little smile on his face. And Rambu's ears flick back, because that grin never spells anything but trouble. And he glances back down at Ozzy, 
attempts to make an escape. All right, well, it's been nice seeing you, but I really do have to- Yeah, okay, sure, got it. Food and stuff and things, just real quick. And Rambu sighs, knows nothing is ever quick with Ozzy, about to tell them as much when they say, wanted to talk to you about last night. And the mess hall roils. What did you say? What did you do? Figures looming over you, pressures compounding, crushing you out of existence. Insane. Nothing right in your head. And they can all tell. Cracks wide enough to sink claws into. Fix it. Solve it. Mask it. Can't let them know how wrong you are, how easy it is, how close to the edge. But he forces the mess hall to straighten back out. Knows how to do this. He can do this. Drops everything from his face and closes himself off in a silent room. Takes a sip of air and begins the show. Oh, sorry about that. we just gotten back from a mission, and I was a tad overexhausted. Shouldn't have been out, really. Rambu says smoothly, covering any chinks in his armor, holds himself very still, and lets nothing through but bland interest won't let them get a handhold. Tips his head and smiles genially. Sorry for any trouble. I'm sure it wasn't fair to you, considering how many hours you work. Around eight on average, right? Techno should give you a break from time to time, don't you think? Rambu's good at what he does. Has a talent for working people over and getting them to think like he wants them to think. Steered in the direction they need to be and away from whatever they're prying into. Proud to be a liar and manipulator. Fuck's wrong with you? He seethes at himself. But it's the only compliment he can pay out. If you could even call it that. Claws flexing into the underside of his tray as he thinks... This is all I have. Corrupted fruit doesn't fall far from the diseased tree, after all. But the assumptions he's making are based off interactions with a normal person. So Rambu is completely unprepared for when Ozzy just bypasses everything and hums nonchalantly. Oh, I don't mind the extra work. Helps keep the depression at bay when I have something to focus on, but that's not what I was talking about. Did they really just say that? Do they really admit something so dangerous? Do they know who they're talking to? Do they know what you could do with that? Rambu thinks in a tailspin, nasty, yawning chasm of that half of his mind, widening like a nauseous smile, eager to have something so personal given so candidly, and he panics, stumbles away from Ozzy like he's going to physically do something to them. Uh, you okay? Ozzy asks in a rare show of being aware of their surroundings. And Rambu's claws squeal against the plastic tray, desperately wanting something to sink into and not just scratch at. But he bobs his head in a friendly nod, smiles so it doesn't reach his eyes like he was taught. Of course. Sorry, do I seem a little off? Probably still a little tired, then. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it, Ozzy. Just for once in your cursed existence, drop it. Please. I can't do this. Go away. Need to be alone. Don't want to be. Need something, anything, someone, heat and light hands in yours. Need sunshine, need to... Look, I'm sorry about last night. I didn't know that... I... just... I didn't know. Ozzy sighs. A weird, rattling noise that comes gurgling up from the depths of their shadow torso. And I don't know, okay? But we have these forms you can fill out at the Osp... at the mail center to stop getting mail. I... What? Rambu asks, genuinely a little baffled as to where Ozzy's train of thought is even going. Just, why are they talking about mail forms? Why would I... They don't have to be able to reach you if you don't want them to. Ozzy interrupts, uncharacteristically soft, looking up at Rambu with an air that could somehow be called gentle, despite the razor-sharp fangs and macabre smile. You're not alone. A lot of us don't want to be followed anymore. It feels like he's been hit, air rushing fast out of his lungs, Ozzy's words sinking into a weak point Rambu didn't know was still exposed. And how? How do they all keep doing this? Reading him so easily? Maybe he's slipping, lost his edge since coming here, since meeting Tubbo? And that thought is terrifying. Yanks at him like wind up on the parapets. Rambu backs up another shaky step. Or tries to, bumping into a wall where he's effectively pinned himself in. 
nowhere to slink off to, no way out. And his tail lashes uncontrollably as he stammers. I, I, I you, you don't know what you're talking about. That was bad. That was inadequate. Can't even mask this. What do you think they're going to do with this information? Blackmail? Betrayal? Used to coax you closer to the edge. How fast would you drop over this time? I probably don't. Ozzy shrugs. Skull bouncing around with the movement. Never clear how much of their cartoonish movements are intentional or not. And they back up a good amount, giving Rombu plenty of room to slip past. But if you ever need him, you know where to find me. It goes against everything he was taught. Don't present your back. Don't give in. Don't let them know they got to you. But Rombu is shaking hard. Feels like he's standing on his tiptoes. Gravity relaxing and surrendering him to freefall. He has to go. Worming past Ozzy without a single look back, Rombu finds where Tubbo is and keeps his eyes locked on him. Watches his wings flare and buzz as he talks. Boisterous laughter cutting above everything else. Brightest spot in the room by far. And slowly, it feels like his feet ease back onto the floor. The table Tubbo's sitting at is pretty full, but when Rombu comes up behind him, without even saying anything to get his attention, Tubbo slings his legs off the spot next to him, leaving enough space for Rombu to drop into. He saved room for me. And it really shouldn't be as big of a deal as Rombu is making it out to be. But he can't remember if anyone's ever cared enough to want him next to them. Smiles around a fork full of his nasty, replicated dinner. A shoulder nudges into his, touch warm and familiar and sparking so many desperate, hopeful things. And Rombu looks over, at where Tubbo is grinning at him like an asshole. Feels his heart stutter in his chest when he snarks. See? Told you it wasn't that bad, smiley pants. Love you. Love you so much. I don't know what to do with it. And he swallows hard. Can't take his eyes off Tubbo as he turns to answer someone else. Lost in the way his nose crinkles when he laughs. Antenna bobbing and jumping in time to his voice. How expressive his face is. Everything he's feeling written in that smile and those laughing dark eyes. Ancients. No one else, sunshine. Just you. Always been you. Someone calls Rombu's name, though, and he snaps out of it. Turns to address them and throws, Your Karyad. Love him. So much sunlight and joy. Want him around forever. Please stay with me. Please love me. All of that into the room it's supposed to stay locked away in. Focus on the people around him. Despite actually having gotten sleep, Rombu feels exhausted, mind a crackling mass of static that grays out everything else. But he can't just stare listlessly off into space like he wants to. There's people at the table, watching you, assessing you, have to keep up appearances. And he shoves all of the uncomfortable things out and plays pretend, acts like he's invested in the conversations happening around him. It's like reading off a script. Laugh here. Ask a question there. Pick your voice up so it has emotion. Remember to let others speak. Be friendly. Be personable. Don't let them see how miserable you are. How tired and drained and dead you feel. Be entertaining. Be fun. Be normal. Rambu laughs, but it sounds like it's coming from miles away. Hollow and stripped of any real personality. But he hopes it's enough to fool them. That none of them care enough to look at him too hard. That he can pass under their radars. He's always been good at that. Because back there, at the palace, it was a double-edged sword, having attention focused on you. On the one hand, it helped to remind Rambu he was real. That he existed, that he mattered on some level. But on the other, having eyes directed at you was never good. It was never good in the long run. They always saw through everything. Left him a shaking, trembling mess for nights on end haunted by their voices running non-stop in his mind. Ancients. Rambu does not want to deal with any of this pretending shit right now. But he's got to. And his ear flicks in an agitated spasm he can't control. Listlessly pushing the leftover food on his plate around, he thinks about the soft solitude of their room. Lights always dimmed low for his sensitive eyes. Wants nothing more than to be back there, where he doesn't have to try so hard all the time. Hey, Tubbo says when there's a break in the conversation. 
some people getting up to go grab new drinks. Voice low, so it's just for Ronbu. And he turns to him, gratefully. So much easier dealing with just one person. I know it's kind of late, but would you, um, would you want to go ahead and leave for Apa Day tonight? It'll take us about a day to get there anyway. Right now, nothing sounds better than some peace and quiet. Just him and Tubbo, their ship running under them and space zipping past. Flying faster than every horrible thing trying to catch him. And Rambu says, like the last exhale that leaves you dropping into bed after a long day. Yes. They make their goodbyes and head back to the room. And as soon as the door hisses shut, Rambu unwinds. Layers of paranoia sloughing off him like sheets of sand over the sides of cliffs. Finally, he can relax. Doesn't have to worry about keeping his face pleasant or tail still. Lets it wave behind him tiredly and pulls his duffel out. The room is quiet while they get their stuff together. Only thing breaking it, the gentle humming Tubbo's doing absent-mindedly as he packs. But it's nice. Soothes along Rambu's frayed nerves like a salve. Silence used to haunt Rambu like a ghost, clung to his back and breathed harshly into his ears, left everything achingly open for whispers to slip in. But silence isn't like that with Tubbo. It's gentle, soft, and comforting. A brief respite from the insanity of his mind. It's something Rambu has come to enjoy deeply, greatly cherishing the time they spend alone together, nothing really needing to be said, but still finding pleasure in the other's company. Rambu's not sure if feeling like this is normal, simple contentment coming from hardly anything at all. Hasn't been this close with anyone else in a long time. He can remember with perfect clarity every memory of his mother, but not really the emotions associated. Doesn't know if it was because he was so young or that information just isn't saved by his brain. Wonders if it was like that with her if he felt comfortable enough with silence then. Probably. Everything was different before. Rambu thinks morosely as they're walking towards the hangars. Duffel slung over his shoulder, not for the first time, wondering how things would have been if his mother had lived. The thought used to keep him awake at night, helped stop some of the sobs from leaving his mouth, envisioning a life that was filled with kind eyes and gentle touches, actual voices responding to his a life where he was cared for. But that's not what he got. Instead, it was long, empty nights and corridors, harsh reprimands after he asked one too many questions, hasty words brushing him off, shoulders turned and the backs of heads, nobody looking at him, nobody caring about him, his father's apathy, his sister's cruelty. Which one are you again? Go take that long walk over a short drop. His claws flex quickly, anger snapping through him. But it's brief. Everything that had been building up knocked out of him last night. But it does give Rambu pause where they're walking across the central hub. None of them ever showed an ounce of concern for him. It hurts, but he can see it now. Can admit it. Honestly thought none of them would even notice when he made the decision to walk out of his dorm that day. His father always acted like he was a burden. Resha wanted him out of Voidfall from day one. None of the others ever did anything to stop the tormenting or the name-calling. Kicked his knees and made him stumble in line. So why, in the name of the fucking cursed ancients of the deep void below, do they keep trying to contact him? It used to be messages coming through on his old handheld from palace staff, inquiring about his studies or when he was expecting to be home, all of it impersonal and easily ignored especially after Rambu hurled the fucking thing into a smelter on Jakku. Thought that'd be the end of it. And then the letter showed up, and he doesn't know what it said. Didn't recognize the handwriting, but Rambu would know his father's personal seal anywhere. Has the image seared into his brain from years of staring at it to where it was embroidered on the back of his cape. After a lifetime of neglect, his father had suddenly decided Rambu's worth his attention for whatever reason and the thought makes him furious. That he thinks he can just waltz back in and ruin everything Rambu's trying to make for himself. Whatever his father has to say, Rambu doesn't want to hear it. 
wishes he could slam a door in his face like he does with all the nasty things lurking in his head. But his eyes catch on the mail center, and he remembers, and his heart jumps. Hey, what are you... Ah, want to go say goodbye to your bestie? Tubbo teases lightly from up ahead, and Rambu sniffs, falling into the easy pattern of their banter as his tail snaps behind him, and he sticks his nose in the air. I am not besties with Ozzy Ostian. Sure you're not. Rambu doesn't bother dignifying that with a response as he heads over to the counter. Nerves prickling hard under his skin, weirdly disappointed to see one of the other clerks working, but he pushes the thought from his mind, asks politely, Excuse me, do you have some of those forms available for, uh, for screening mail? And it doesn't take long to fill them out, and it shouldn't be a big deal scratching words onto a sheet of paper. But Rambu's hand tremors around the pen, pulse thundering under his ears like it does when he's running down streets behind Tubbo. Like he's got the Asachi's trigger in his hands, and another ship in his sights. Heady rush of triumph. And it's small, but it still feels like a victory spelling out Anwil under unauthorized senders. Lesson 40. Do not let them know what's precious to you. So then uh, I told Furrow that he couldn't, um, that he was wrong, and, uh, uh, and that I, I just, uh, uh, I, uh. Rambu says way too quick and loses the sentence, flops back with a groan because this keeps happening and he hates it, but it's like his mind runs faster than he can talk, and he doesn't know how to make it slow down. My brain's too fast, he grumbles wiggles further up the bed when he feels shaky fingers brush lightly against the tip of his horn, sighs when Mama's hand sinks all the way into his hair, mussing it into his eyes while he giggles. Today is not one of her good days, but Rambu had to come see her, because no one else would listen when he tried to tell them about stupid furrow. He knows he should probably leave her alone, rolls onto his stomach and frowns at the bags under her eyes, how gray she is. Lips dry and cracked. Wishes she would just get some sleep and get better already. Mama, why don't you sleep more? He asks, kicking his legs aimlessly in the air, fidgeting like he knows Maliri hates, but she's not here, so he can do what he wants. And Rambu grins, kicks his legs harder out of spite. I... I do, darling, but... But it doesn't seem to... seem to help much. She sighs, with a funny-looking smile, eyes barely cracked open, dull green of them so different than everyone else's, like she's a house with the lights out inside. Propping his chin up in a hand, Rambu wonders if there's anything he could do to help her get her lights back on, jumping when the door unexpectedly groans open, and he flips around, surprised because no one usually bothers them, and then his eyes blow wide as he scrambles upright. F father Father doesn't exactly do a double-take, but his ears flick up, a very rare tell as to what he's feeling. And Rambu preens that he picked up on it, wilts a little, though, once his eyes snap off him. Dismissed, get back in line. Jumping to a spot over his shoulder. He shouldn't be here, Etta. He's my son, and I'll see him as much as I want to. Mama's voice says, more steady than he's ever heard and Rambu shivers a little at how cold it seems. Looks at her cautiously, because like this, she sounds just like everyone else. Etta. Father begins, in a tone that has Rambu's tail curling up close to his chest. But Mama's eyes flash, like the lights that dance in the sky at night. Chin tipped back, and gaze slitted. Ethereal, and just a little dangerous, when she says, Leave it, Zitho and father never, ever gets told what to do. And for a second, it looks like he's going to listen to her. But then his gaze hardens, and Rambu almost scrambles off the bed because he knows that look, and it's very not good. Rossi, take Rambu back to his quarters immediately. N no Rambu cries, scooting further up the mattress, emboldened by the thought that his mama is right here and she wants him to be here, wants him to stay. 
Nobody else does, just her. Don't want to leave her. But it ends up not mattering, the guard scooping him up anyway. Stop! He shrieks, flailing around, but Rossi's grip is strong, and he doesn't waver. Hauls Rambu off from his mother's side, howling like a banshee. Stop it! There's a firm grip on the back of his head instantly, and Rambu's forced to look up into glowing green eyes. Feels all the moisture leave his mouth because father's composure slips for the briefest second, and the snarling, spitting anger in his gaze is so apparent. You're too old for this kind of behavior. Stop with the theatrics. You know better than that. Father says, hand leaving Rambu as soon as he clicks his mouth shut obediently. Wipes it discreetly against his pant leg. But Rambu catches it. Feels shame twist up, nasty and ugly in his chest. Especially when Father adds on to the guard. Make sure he gets a bath. A thorough one, do you understand? Yes, sire. Rossi intones. And then they're gone. Rambu tucked in his arms. Cowed into being quiet all the way back to his quarters. Sits with his head down while the servants draw the bath, and doesn't complain as they scrub his skin practically raw. None of them answer his questions. Won't explain why Rambu needed a bath so badly, even though he had one this morning. Don't tell him why they wear masks and gloves as they do it. Nor the reason for taking away the clothes he was wearing despite them not having a single rip. It starts to make Rambu nervous. All the weird activity and turned shoulders. The silence. And he fidgets. Can't stop talking. Growing louder and more agitated until they have to pay attention to him. Screaming out threats that don't make sense to tired eyes and upturned noses. But in the end, they leave him alone like they always do. Locking the door behind them for good measure. And Rambu bangs his fists on it until they hurt. Confused and upset and scared. He wails for his mama, his brothers, his sisters, his father, his governess. Just someone. Anyone. Please help. Please. I'm here. Please look at me. Please pay attention. I'm good. I promise I can be good. Staggers back from the closed door and screams till his voice cuts out. No one comes, though. The door remains shut. And he stands there, panting. Feels like something impossibly heavy is crushing him as his lower lip wobbles. Little voice whispering at the back of his mind. No one cares about you. Left you here, like you're nothing. Wonder if they'll remember to come let you back out. And he makes a strangled sound of panic. Claws biting in sharp to his palms. But the pain helps recenter his mind because that's not true. They care about him. They do. He just... He just did something wrong, but that's okay. That's fine. Rambu can be better. He can learn to be better. His body quakes around him, sick glide of some phantom pain racing out from his chest and burning down his arms, settling heavy and horrible at the tips of his fingers. Clutching his hands to his front, Rambu tries to rub the sensation away, but it won't go. And he whines, wishing his mama was here. Wants her hands soothing through his hair. And closing his eyes on a hitched inhale, he pictures where he wants to go. Maliri says he's not supposed to be teleporting yet. Something about developing cortexes and lack of mental aptitude. But Rambu knows better than her. Remembers learning in class the general coordinates for Voidfall. Uses that as his base point to figure out where Mama's room is. He's only gone short distances before from one end of his room to the other. Never something this far. Goes crashing out of midair with a yelp, and thuds heavy on the floor. Head woozy, and struggling to focus. Body refusing to cooperate as it twitches with the weird tightness of slipping through reality. Plush rug under hands, moon flowers, and sharp bite of something metallic. Soft beeping of machines, shallow breathing. And he knows he's in the right spot. Stumbles to his feet and only sways a little bit. Makes his way over to her bedside. Ma- Rambu tries, but his voice is beyond hoarse. And he has to clear his throat a few times, tugging at her blankets to get her attention. Mama? Rambu? She murmurs, head dipping towards him without opening her eyes, 
brows drawn down in either pain or confusion. I... how... how did you... I teleported. Rambu tells her proudly, chest puffing up, and one eye slits open, crinkling as her cheek lifts in a smile, and she holds an arm out, all the invitation he needs to clamber up into the bed. He finds his usual spot against her side, head tucked into the crook of her neck, and he sighs at the arm that goes around him, snuggling into her embrace while she coos. So proud of you, dear one, my littlest. So, so talented already. Rambu trills happily and coils his tail around her arm, finally relaxing after being taken out of here earlier. Thinks he might fall asleep, but drags himself back into consciousness when Mama whispers, Darling, don't let, don't let your father know you, you're, you're here. Why? He whispers back, tipping his head up to look at her, but her eyes are shut again, dark bags under them, hollow set to her cheeks that he doesn't remember being there, and Rambu has to pat her face gently to get her to respond. He'll take you from, from me again. Mama says softly, lips barely moving. Looks like she's really trying, but sleep has a firm grasp on her mind. And Rambu can tell she's losing. And I... And I... I don't ha have much... much time. It's okay, Mama. You can tell me later. Go to sleep now. Rambu tells her gently, brushing wayward hair out of her face. Hopes she feels better when she wakes up. But it's a stupid wish, he thinks, with a sour expression, and lays back down with a sigh, because she never does. Absent-mindedly running his fingers over her karyad braid, Rambu fiddles with the golden bead at the end, eyes tracking over the designs he knows by heart, the ones father carved for her before he confessed. Moonflowers, and the sharp geometric lines of the daysetter crown, harsh marks that mean nothing to him but something to them, and wonders what his will look like, what designs his karyad will carve for him. Books. Dragons, maybe. Rambu thinks sleepily, nodding off with his hand still loosely draped around Mama's braid, metal of her jewelry growing cold in his grasp. Can't wait to meet them. Can't wait to love them. For them to love me. When he wakes up the next morning, he's back in his room, and the door's still locked, but this time there's a guard standing there watching him with unblinking green eyes, and Rambu feels like there's something tight wrapped around his throat. Twenty-six minutes left. Review what you know. Blurry blue-white lines of hyperspace whiz past, a hypnotic spiral that's easy to get lost in as Rambu imagines clapping his hands together and pulling them apart, a huge codex of information expanding out that he can cycle through at will. Pulls up everything he knows related to... Apide. C-class planet orbiting around Kaysen. Main sequence star with a projected 1.2 million years of regular solar output left. Part of the Makassi system, third largest in the Sivim quadrant. Joined the Empire approximately... No, wrong. Not joined. Conquered. And he clicks his tongue strikes through that piece of information and rewrites it, irritated with himself that it hadn't already been changed. Should know better by now. But what can you expect from a slow-witted, stuttering, shut up, reviewing information, I don't have time for you. Conquered, approximately on stardate 89 of the Imperial Year 2021, currently serves as the main manufacturing hub for all Starfleet cruisers, frigate, class, and larger, no direct forced labor, but there is a very aggressive system of institutionalized career placement that does not encourage much deviation from jobs which do not benefit the shipyards. All right, that's the basics. A quick overview, more or less, but now comes the tricky part. The important part. The people. Because Rambu's got to know how to behave, isn't going to risk offending anyone or stepping on toes, only has one chance to get this right— so he makes sure to dredge up everything he knows related to the Melifera, 
bipedal race of beings with extra set of functional arms connected to the torso directly beneath primary limbs. Possess the ability of flight through insectoidal wings, also split off into primary and secondary sets. Antenna act as another sensory organ that are capable of picking up on electromagnetic fields, gravitational shifts, and thermal readings. Hmm. Clinical and detached. Not really what he's wanting. Maybe if he just... Nothing else worth knowing. They're beneath us. Don't trouble yourself with trite topics. And he can see her standing in front of him. Arms folded behind her back, and spine ramrod straight. And his fingers burn with the need to dig into something. I told you I don't have time for you. Go away. I'm busy. <sighs> Focus. The Melifera are hard-working and compassionate people. We'll likely be welcoming to outsiders. Mind your manners, and you should be fine. Don't mention the Empire. Don't mention where you come from. Watch what you say. Keep a handle on things. Show respect to everyone. Very important. They're a very close-knit and family-oriented group. Better. He's doing better. But then his mind pitches sharply to the side, finding an opening, and it's just... And they're easy to take advantage of. Could use those family ties to control them easier than anything. Manipulation is simple when they're this unguarded. Wear their hearts on their sleeves, dangerous and stupid. Don't let anyone know you. Don't let them get that close. See what happens when you do. Vulnerable, weak, deserve what they got. No! No! Stop! Bad! Wrong! Stop it! Behave! Be better! Be anything else! And Rambu's hands twitch towards his arms automatically. Redirect a second later when he remembers what he's supposed to be doing now. Buries his claws in the thick, corded bracelet around his wrist. Presses in until there's a dull pain against his skin. It's better, though. It's better, right? Not to be punching holes in his arms. It has to be, but why is it such a big deal in the first place? He's just being overdramatic and looking for attention. Fingers spasming when he hears that deep, monotone voice right next to him. You're too old to be acting so childish, throwing temper tantrums and acting out. Rambu bares his teeth, claws sinking in deeper, shredding as they go. It's a disgrace. An embarrassment. Absolutely pathetic. Teal cloak swishing at the edges of his vision as he strides past. Daysetter crown and silver streaked hair, looking straight ahead and never ever at him. Your actions speak to all of us, and you do a disservice to your family. We never wanted you, your mother never. Bright hot prick of pain against his wrist has Rambu jerking his head down, slowly pulling his claws free of the tattered remains of the bracelet. Feels shame start to bubble up, because he's just gone through another one, and it's only been a few days. This is industrial courting. It's supposed to last for months. What color do you want? Rambu snaps his head to the side, to where Tubbo's rummaging around in a glove compartment, colorful bits of knotted cord passing around his hands, and his mouth is very dry. But Tubbo's waiting for an answer. Have to say something. Know how to behave. Open your mouth. Speak evenly, you idiot. I said go away. Yellow. Rambu stutters a little, despite his best efforts, fingers flexing automatically in reprimand. But then Tubbo turns around with a big grin crinkling the corners of his dark eyes, and everything finally quiets in his head. Good choice, Boo. Here. Tubbo tosses the new bracelet across the gaps in their chairs and Rambu only fumbles slightly, catching it, ignoring the way his hands tremor as he pulls off the ruined one and slips this one on. It fits snug against his skin, soft but sturdy to withstand his claws, at least for a little bit. Few days tops, apparently. And the fact that he needs it has Rambu tugging the cuff of his bomber down so he doesn't have to look at it. But it's still there. He can feel it, like a brand around his wrist. A permanent reminder that his head is very wrong, and very messed up, and he's not okay, and hasn't been for a long time. Doors rattling, shame, and... Is yellow your favorite color? Tubbo asks, seemingly out of the blue. And everything in Rambu's mind grinds to a halt, frozen because he actually has to think about it. Maybe puts in more thought than necessary combing through his compendium, but it's a welcome distraction. I don't think so. He says after a minute. Can't find any information related to something as trivial as favorite color. 
I'm not sure I have one. Why? Tubbo shrugs, turning so he's more squarely facing Ronbu. Lower set of arms folded across the armrest of his chair as he leans forward. Dunno. You just seem to like yellow. It's your usual go-to. It is? Rambu asks, baffled, flicking past random memories trying to find anywhere his color preference mattered. Is shocked to find multiple instances of him picking yellow when given an option. There's images of his hands reaching out for cheery colored notebooks and sunny blankets, eyes lingering longer on snack packaging with the bright shade. And he's now realizing... Most of the corded bracelets he wears are the same vibrant hue. Huh, he says, slouching back into his chair, confused but not in a bad way, as to where this obvious favoritism came from. Is thinking maybe it's somehow related to his preference for gold jewelry. Montebo makes an excited noise, twisting around quickly. Oh, I love this song! He cranks the volume on the dash, Entire cockpit flooded with the pounding of drums and electric wailing of guitars. Lyrics in a language Rambu doesn't understand, but pegs as something from the Elopian system. Something fast-paced and enthusiastic and blindingly exuberant. Tebo nods his head to the side and sings along, loud and uninhibited, shoulders jumping in time to the music as he bobs in his seat, antenna dipping and waving. Perfect picture of zeal for life and tightly bundled happiness. Reminds Rambu of foreign sunlight baking deliciously hot into his skin. Playing tag over rooftops, dancing barefoot around shipping containers. The sound of his voice is like warm, calloused, rough hands in his. Fingertips tracing over knuckles and veins. Searing body heat like there's a star in his arms. It's every lovely memory Rambu cards through at night if he can't sleep. Sunlit with affection he's never known. Gilded and perfect and... And Tebo catches him staring. Brilliant smile growing wider as giddy laughter spills out. And... Oh. Rambu thinks. Watching Tebo slip his eyes closed while the last chorus thunders to an end. Mortal equivalent of a beam of sunlight. Oh, that's why. Hooking a thumb under his jacket sleeve, Rambu pulls it back so he can see the vibrant snatch of yellow. Trails finger pads over it, like he painfully remembers moving them across Tubbo's face. Hi, sunshine. He thinks, both at the bracelet and the memory of Tubbo under the glowing lichen of Jayuet. The silvery light reflecting off the high points of his face. How scared Rambu was to touch him, but doing it anyway thumbing away silent tears that burned his skin. He wonders when exactly he started associating Tubbo, happiness and joy and love, with yellow, and it might have been then, on Giauet. That night he grew bold or stupid enough to pull Tubbo into him as he was falling asleep. That night Rambu laid awake until morning, feeling like he had a supernova curled up on his chest. Thinks maybe that's when this whole mess started. When he looked at Tubbo in the watery dawn light and realized he never wanted to be anywhere else. Hey. Tubbo calls, and compared to a few seconds ago, his voice is so soft. Like the barest whisper, a secret only for him. And when Rambu turns, the smile aimed at him is nothing but genuine and encouraging. I'm real proud of you. You know that, right? Rambu swallows hard. A thousand wailing things rising up saying he's lying. But they get brushed away with a gentle touch. One he hardly ever feels. And his bangs fall down past his right eye, but he knows she's there. Can hear her gentle humming. Precious thing, darling one. Proud of you. Always have been, my littlest one, my son. And he clears his throat harshly. Thanks. Of course, boo. Tabo says. Looks like he's going to say something more, but an alert from the Asachi draws his attention. And he turns away with a slow grin unfurling across his lips, hands moving fast and excited over the controls in a pattern Rambu recognizes instantly. Easing up on the throttle, engines winding down into lower gear, hyperspace slowing down around us, which means... 
and his stomach twists up into knots, seeing the blue of hyperspace drop away. The yellow-green planet hanging in front of them. Vast spread of chartreuse plains and emerald oceans. White of clouds marbling the atmosphere. And where it's rotated away from Kisan, the surface glowing with massive hexagonal webs of infrastructure. Shipyards and factories and institutionalized labor and the Empire's greatest manufacturing plant, Apidae. Oh, I swear, never gets old seeing it. Tabo sighs, takes control of the Asachi and moves them towards the planet, easily dodging the few Imperial satellites that orbit Apidae like buzzards. They remain passive as the Asachi passes, likely only configured to sound the alarms if spacecraft big enough to threaten the planet drop out of hyperspace within range. But still, the fact that they're here like guard dogs, like jailers, makes Rambu's heart constrict. Why did you think it was a good idea coming here, saying yes, even knowing who you are? Rambu worries as they descend through the atmosphere, heading towards a part of the planet that's in the middle of the day cycle, giving him a clear view of the shipyards that stretch across the land like a tumor. You have no right being here. Do you think you're allowed? What's wrong with you, elitist, sympathizer, imperial dog? I can hear you overthinking. Stop. You're gonna blow a fuse. Tebo laughs, but it tapers off into awkward silence, only broken by the sounds of the Asachi streaking down through the atmosphere. Rambu wishes he could find any words to answer him with, but his throat is cinched tight in panic as layers of fluffy white clouds glide past the viewport. Mind snarled up and around the thought that he shouldn't be here, terrible person, prince of the empire that's enslaved these people, intruding on their home, on their lives. What was he thinking? He can't... And Tebo isn't able to take his eyes off the controls while he's trying to land, but Rambu can tell he wants to sees his antenna flick in his direction. Little subconscious acknowledgement, furrow in his brow, and he says, You know you can tell me what's bothering you. I'm always here for you. For whatever you need, okay? Because I care about you. Whispers warm in his voice, but it's right in Rambu's ear, not real. And he shivers, very, very thankful when it doesn't add on the rest of what it usually says. Loosens his nerves, though. Gives him room to admit quietly. Uh, I'm just, um, just apprehensive about being here, given who I am, where I'm from. Hey, no, you're not like that, okay? You're a good person, Rambu. Doesn't matter where you came from. Lie. Terrible person. Monster. Horrible people. What about my planet? My people. You think we deserve this? Chains suddenly dropping away one at a time in his head, faster than Rambu can try and force them back on. Jumps away when a hand swipes at him, laughing. Empty eye sockets that sink for miles, staring back through the crack in the door. Hello, did you miss us? We're still here, try as you might. Give in, come back, welcome home. And I regret saying all that shit. I shouldn't have let my anger get the better of me. And I, I know that doesn't help because it's still in your head, right? What I said? Tebo says, voice a distant echo, but it reaches Rambu way down in his winding hallways. Helps pull him out. Gets him away from the darkness that howls and wails like a yawning maw behind him. And as soon as Rambu's free, he gets lost instantly in those space dark eyes that turn to him quick always so clearly broadcasting whatever Tubbo's feeling. And right now, they're fiery with determination, with affection and care and lo- And Rambu chokes on the air in his lungs because he's imagining things. Well, listen to this, memory boy, because you have every right to be here. He wants to argue with him, is going to argue with him, but Tubbo fixes him with a look, the same one he gives to particularly stubborn gears. Like you can try all you want, but he is going to get his way. You're not responsible for your ancestors' actions, and you're not responsible for anyone's now. You are not your family, Rambu. It feels like a star's exploded to life in his chest. Blasting everything out of existence. Whites out the maze of hallways and the things trying to crawl free. Leaves him breathless and weak in the knees. 
lightheaded with terrible euphoria because hearing that is everything. He's completely overwhelmed with emotions he doesn't have names for. Starts clicking in the back of his throat. Affection threatening to strangle him whole at the way Tubbo smiles at him. All gentle edges and fathomless understanding. Love you, love you so much, sunshine. Can't do this without you. Only one for me. And Rambu's got to tell him. He's going to tell him. Mouth opening, words about to tumble free. But it'd be watching his dark eyes go wide in surprise. Unsure, uncomfortable expression dragging his face down. Care for you, but not like that. You're not mine, and I'm not yours. Sorry. Awkward silences that stretch and grow. Pushing you two apart. How long until he stops looking at you? Talking to you? Panic and fear and nausea. Can't lose him. Can't. Have to. Got to. Must have. Need to. And his mind is his greatest asset. Redirects hard out of a sense of self-preservation. Keeps him safe. Keeps everything hidden. And Rambu winds up shakily saying instead, You can't know what that means to me. I think I have an idea. Tebo says with a small smile, looks back at the viewport as they finally exit the bank of clouds, sunlight streaming in and blinding Rambu for a minute. Once he blinks past it, though, he can make out the land rushing past underneath them. Anxiety's forgotten for a second as he scoots forward in his seat, enraptured with how much green there is racing beneath them, bushy tops of trees and long yellowed grasses waving in the wind. The Asachi swoops to the side, and there, on the horizon, a town spreads out across the land. Nothing huge. Rather small, actually. Earth-toned buildings nestled together that look a little closer than they should. And Rambu does some quick mental math, ears flicking up when he figures out how low Tubbo's flying. Uh, shouldn't you be a little further up? He asks hesitantly, watching a dirt road zip past can easily make out figures moving along it. Worries about the ship clipping some of the grass-covered roofs, but Tubbo just grins, urging them even lower. Shh, just wait. Rambu makes an unhappy noise in the back of his throat that lilts up at the end with confusion. Because there, further down the road but rapidly approaching, is a cluster of smallish figures, all jumping and waving in the middle of the path, and his eyebrows shoot up. Are those... Yep, Tubbo says, and then tips the Asachi to the side, blowing past the gaggle of children and probably knocks the whole lot of them over on their asses. But he's grinning as he does it, evening out and angling towards a swath of open fields. They always like to be the first ones welcoming me home. That's sweet, Rambu murmurs with a small smile, can't help thinking about what kind of welcome he'd get if he went back to Anwell. Empty landing pad. Servant sent out to collect you like an uninteresting package. Cold, light, and cold hallways. Drops the thought once Tubbo barks out in laughter. You say that now? Wait until they fill your shoes with grasshoppers. It's still nice, though, seeing how they care, Rambu thinks as they land. Dust clouds billowing up from the dry plains. Grasses snapping erratically in the wind the Asachi's turbines kick up. They wait for you to come home, are excited to see you. Quick shuffle of their things together, claws picking at his bracelet, waiting for the cargo bay to open. No one's ever waited for me. No one's ever cared that I'm around. Hey. Tubbo bumps into his shoulder, jostling Rambu a bit, and doesn't move away. Stays leaned up against him, so his burning body heat starts to melt through the contact. Smiles until his eyes crinkle. I'm really glad you decided to come with me. Except for you. No one's ever cared about me except for you. Love you so much, sunshine. I'm yours forever. Me too. Rambu murmurs back. Throat thick with everything trying to leak out. Stinging in his nose like sulfuric gases. Settled in his chest like magma. Hands shaking with the repressed need to reach out and gingerly link their fingers together. But before he can make a stupid mistake, Tebo steps back, heads down the ramp, and as always, Rambu is helpless following after him. 
Apide is hot, but blessedly dry. Insects singing loud in the afternoon sun while they tromp through the long grasses. Painfully bright blue sky stretching wide overhead. And after a few minutes of uncomfortable squinting, Rambu relents and fishes his sunglasses out of his duffel. They help immensely, but he doesn't like wearing them. Weird hang-up in his head about having his eyes covered. It's because no one ever looked at you back there. Rambu keeps pace with Tubbo as he leads them out of the countryside and back towards the little town. Don't want to go back to that. Lose what you have with him, how it feels, knowing he's looking at you. Can't stop his tail as it flicks out automatically and brushes against the end of one of Tubbo's gossamer wings. Love knowing he sees your eyes, when no one else ever cared to before. They step out of the field and onto a dusty dirt road. Wildflowers in a thousand hues bobbing along the sides, and Tubbo heads one direction, but Rambu looks quick in the other. Catches a glimpse of hulking shapes on the horizon, beams and scaffolding crisscrossing the lower half of the sky. The shipyards are massive. Makes sense, given the size of craft they usually produce here. But it makes Rambu sick, thinking about all the people there, working diligently for an empire that couldn't care less about them. He watches Tubbo ahead of him, graceful shape of his wings tucked against his back, how they're iridescent and the light ripples across them, kaleidoscope of colors like nebula out in deep space. Knows how smart he is, the way his brain works, the most incredible thing Rambu's ever seen, and despairs violently that anyone would ever look at him and see anything lesser. Rambu flexes his claws at the hot spike of anger that swirls through his veins, hopes there aren't any enforcers in town, but he should be okay, should be fine. Sparring with Dream usually keeps him settled for a few days after. But just the thought of someone shoving Tubbo around looking down their nose at him, calling him good, obedient little drone, mindless worker bee, as Rambu seeing red. Heads up, we've got incoming, Tebo says in a mock, serious voice. Same words he uses when they're out on jobs, with all the playfulness of wrestling back at HQ. And Rambu snaps out of it, is about to ask him what, when he hears the loud chattering growing closer. A mob of children round the corner up ahead, shrieking in delight as they barrel down the road towards them. And Tebo drops to a knee, arms flung out to catch the first few that come streaking at him, their high-pitched, giggling voices speaking fast in Apian as they swarm him. Rambu has to take a few quick steps back, tail lashing behind him erratically at all the sudden noise and movement, sees flashes of grimy walls and blood-darkened floors, blinks hard until he's back on a dusty red road, under a deep blue sky. Breathe. You're okay. You're fine. You're here. It's okay. Snaps his head down erratically when there's a light tug at one of his pant legs. Sees a little boy with impossibly dark eyes and blonde curls grinning up at him, lilting words flowing out that Rambu doesn't understand. And he stutters, Uh, sorry, I don't, um, I, I, I it's just... And as soon as Standard leaves his mouth, the children switch seamlessly, now much more interested in him, and Rambu fights the urge to teleport away as they crowd closer, looking at him with sparkling, intelligent eyes, antenna bobbing in excitement while they pepper him relentlessly with questions. Hey, Sarah, where are you from? Why are you so tall? Did your mom make you eat all your pollen cakes, too? Whoa, you have a tail! How'd you get it? Can you give me a piggyback ride? Rambu's trying to keep it together. He really, really is. Doesn't want to come across as rude or snobbish. But all the little hands on him and direct attention is driving him up the walls. And he swallows fast and hard, feeling like there's cord wrapped tight around his throat. Fingers spasming because there's a knife there a second later. Gonna sing for us, songbird? Let me loosen those vocal cords up for you. White hot pain. And that's when the screaming started. Hey, hey, hey! Amasis, back up. Give him room to breathe. And Rambu knows that voice, latches onto it like a lifeline, goes tripping out of then and stumbles into now. Straight into two sets of arms that wrap around him and pull him close, and it's sunshine and lavender and machine oil. Playing tag, breathless and excited, it's dancing barefoot in the cargo hold, everything he's ever wanted. 
and Rambu's tail winds around Tubbo's waist, terrified of him pulling away. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Not again. Scared. Don't want to be alone. Stay, please. Sorry. 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 He stammers under his breath, knows he's making a scene, a bad first impression already, and don't know what else I expected. Won't listen. Can't learn. Unteachable. Nothing like your sister. A disgrace. But there's warm hands across his back, a few steps closer until they're completely pressed together. Hushed words, only for him. Hey, hey, it's okay, Boo. You're okay. No need to apologize. It's fine. It is not. Can't believe you're acting like this in public. Taught you better. Arambu shuts his eyes so he doesn't have to see her, leans down and buries his face in the top of Tubbo's head, relishing in the warm heat radiating off from where the sun's been baking down onto his hair. His heart races. Skin prickling like that thermal knife is still burning lines into his neck, across his shoulders, leaving thin, off-gray scars he hates to see in mirrors, ugly and wispy like cobwebs, like physical manifestations of the cracks his mind is split into. The memories coat his mind like oil, won't scrub off no matter how hard he tries, and Rambu is forced to sit there and watch Relive over and over again as that knife makes its trails down his skin. Hears his own screams echoing back, bouncing off bare stone walls and concrete floors. The dull, sickening crack when they snapped his horn off. Red, hot pain like he's never felt burning through his nerves. Rambu shudders, twisting his face into Tubbo's hair, despite the way his sunglasses dig into his skin. Mindful not to squash his antenna and almost sneezes when one brushes across his nose. But it helps remind him that what he's seeing isn't real. Instead of pain and the off-metallic scent of blood, Ranbu focuses on the sunlight he can feel on his face, soft rise and fall of Tubbo's chest, the quiet words Tubbo's murmuring seemingly absent-mindedly while he runs hands across his back. You're okay. It's okay. I'm here, not going anywhere. Promised you. I got you. You'll be safe. Promise. Won't leave you again. And it's too much. Makes desperate hope flare in his chest as his mind goes spinning off down paths it shouldn't. Thinking about whispering, I love you, and hearing it echoed back with depthless affection. About Tubba with a braid tucked behind his left ear, winking shine of Ronbu's bead at the end. And it hurts how bad he wants it to be real. How much he wants Tubbo to love him. Never going to happen. Don't you know who you are? Who he is? Who could ever love you? Snips cruelly from somewhere. And for once, Rambu isn't going to argue with whoever it is because they're right. He is not a good person. And while he's actively trying not to be a bad person, Rambu knows there's no way he's ever going to be someone that's worthy of Tubbo. Rambu's hurt a lot of people. More than Tubbo. And he did it on purpose each time. No accidents, no mistakes. Just him and his horrible mind and the way he knows how to tear someone down to their knees. And he did that to Tubbo. Just kept going and digging and shredding until he was sobbing, begging Rambu to stop. And now Rambu has the audacity to stare after him and wish hopelessly to be loved. It's disgusting. He's disgusting. And his head's always going to be messed up, and the specters are realistically never going to leave him. He'll be haunted by past mistakes and dark thoughts the rest of his life. And that's not something anyone else should have to deal with. Not something they could easily love. Tubbo deserves a person that can make him happy. That'll appreciate how his mind thinks and see the beauty in his work. Who will cherish and support him the rest of his days and not... whatever broken, misplaced thing that Rambu is. It's been a stupid fantasy from the beginning. Something he's let go on for far too long. But that's Rambu's specialty, isn't it? Delusions and altered realities and parasocial relationships. Constructing his own narrative to always get what he wants. But if he keeps it up, it's going to become a monster he can't control. Destroy everything he and Tubbo have. Being friends means more than any delusion ever could. So Rambu forces himself to disentangle the two of them, 
stepping back from Tubbo while he shoves out everything that's begging him to just try, insisting that he's wrong. It's real. He cares. He could love you. Just try. Locking it away with finality, and pretends his heart isn't dissolving out of his chest. Okay? Tubbo murmurs, still close enough that he's pretty much all Ranbu can see, but they're not touching anymore, and it's killing him. But he's okay. He'll make himself be okay. Nods and says, shaky, but sure. Yeah, I just... yeah, sorry. Tubbo huffs, and looks like he wants to reach out for Ranbu again, but stops. Of course he does. No one wants you. Never have, never will. Just leave me alone. Sways forwards a little with the aborted motion anyway. You haven't done anything wrong, got it? I'm just happy you're okay. I'm happy you're okay too. A bright voice chimes in with, and Rambu hides his wince. Forgot they had an audience, as all the other children agree heartily. Peeks over Tubbo's head at the semicircle of them behind his back, some tension easing away, seeing the sincerity in all their big, dark eyes. Hi! I'm Helianthius, but you can call me Healy. The little girl at the front says. Rich, chestnut hair bound back in two messy braids, wings snapping open as she jerks a thumb at herself, and then points out everyone else. Rattling off a long list of names that Rambu makes sure he saves, creates a new file for this gaggle of children under important information. I'm Rambu. He says when she's done, Odd streak of pride at that being the end of it. No more fussy titles that just make him feel worse. Like that was all he amounted to. A name wrote down in the ledgers and tacked on to the end of formal announcements. Looks at Tubbo, quick, and can't fight the grin that twitches his lips up. And I'm Tubbo's partner. And for some reason, that sends the children into rounds of excited noises, and a few of the younger ones try and scramble forwards but get held back by their elders, another barrage of questions thrown at him, but this time it's, do you fly like Bo does, and can I see your blaster, and the syndicate is so cool, and where have you been, and is Techno really pink? Rambu doesn't even know where to start answering them. Thankfully gets saved as Tubbo sticks two fingers in his mouth and whistles. Gets all the kids to shut up at once, and he shakes his head, shooing them off with a playful, don't you have places to be? Flos, I know you're supposed to be helping your mother in the bakery. And Lalas and Marini, you're not supposed to be out of town this far. Come on, come on, let's go back. The rest of the walk into town is hyper-chaotic. Rambu getting at least three separate attempted lectures on their little village, Avalar. One of which includes a very detailed and winding narrative about Hadira, who lost one of her hair ribbons on a walk, but found it the next day under her pillow. Which somehow, proves the town has a very benevolent and all-powerful ribbon fairy. And if he wants a ribbon under his pillow, Rambu just has to eat all his pollen cakes. And he tries not to laugh at how frantically Tubbo starts shaking his head behind Hadira's back. Rambu's attention is constantly pulled in a dozen directions. Taurus wants him to watch him try and do a somersault. Magnola still wants a piggyback ride. Healy won't leave off about his blaster, which he's glad he left on the ship now. Lalas is trying to tell him about his engineering project. Marini is arguing with her brother about how hers is better. Flos keeps trying to trip him, and half a dozen others are orbiting around Tubbo doing the same things. And it's a lot, but it's kinda nice, Rambu decides. Finds himself laughing at their antics, warmth spreading out when they grin, Excited voices rising in too fast jokes that make hardly any sense. But it's clear they're trying to make him laugh again. So much affection and kind interest in a stranger that it makes his heart ache. These are such wonderful people, he thinks gently. Watching Tubbo scoop up a shrieking Magnola, tucking her little legs through a set of arms as he races off down the path towards town, belting out some song the children all seem to know and he understands so much how Tubbo ended up being the way he did. This part of Apide is all extensive rolling prairie and verdant forests, and Avalares settled back into a huge sloping hill, draped over the land like a comfortable blanket. Houses half-built into the hillside with mismatched brick chimneys poking out of the earth. 
Brightly colored doors and hexagonal windows pepper the earth-toned walls. Ivy and other climbing vines wrapped around window sills. So many flowers spilling out of the planter boxes and clustered in beautiful gardens. Rambu isn't sure he'd even be able to memorize them all. The children stream out ahead of them, forming some sort of honor guard as they walk down the main street. And they don't get the same unbridled exuberance from the adults, but Rambu can still tell everyone is excited, calling out to Tubbo happily in Apian and waving arms as they pass. Despite his flawless recall, Rambu is really bad at learning language. Struggled enough with his own mother tongue and then standard. Has to try really hard to string sentences together. But he can memorize words, no problem. And his ears flick when he hears one he'd know anywhere, repeated over and over again as townsfolk greet Tubbo. Are they asking you about the Asachi? He asks in bewilderment, when there's not really anyone to overhear. And Tubbo scrunches his nose in confusion before he bursts out into laughter, giggling so hard it shakes his shoulders and disturbs a sleeping Magnola who finally crashed after a lot of yawning. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't know. Um, yeah, it's Apian for, like, uh, an affectionate insult? Tubbo says, resettling the little girl who nods off again quickly, nuzzling her head into the back of his neck. And Tubbo looks up at Ronbu, cocky kind of shy smile on his face. I don't think it translates super well, but it's like, little spitfire... Ha, <laughs> no, probably closer to little ass kicker. Ancients help him, but it fits. It fits so well. And that's what you named your ship? After your nickname, Little Ass Kicker? Rambu asks in mounting amusement, grin unfurling across his lips as Tubbo laughs again, tipping his head back with color high on his cheeks. Suddenly has the desperate urge to have known Tubbo while he was growing up. Wonders how much of a tiny terror he was. Eventually, the kids start splintering off, and Tubbo passes Magnola to Healy, who waves her antenna at them as she struggles under the younger's weight. Refuses any help, though, and tromps off proudly down the road. Give it a few years. They're going to be calling her a Sachi, too. Tubbo snorts, bumping their shoulders together, and then starts heading up this winding path set into the hill. It's not a huge hill, but it gives a nice vantage point for the rest of the small valley. And Rambu pauses for a second, admiring the warm green everything is, how lush and verdant and rich the land looks. Balmy summer wind ruffles at Rambu's hair, nothing like the sharp, biting snap of the breeze up on Voidfald's parapets. And he tilts his head into it, feels like gentle fingers combing through his hair. Heights have been a problem for a while. But not up here, Rambu's finding. Even as he edges a little further off the road, because it's not a sheer drop, just a gentle decline. And the earth feels sturdy under his feet, comfortable heaviness in his limbs like he's stuck in place, like he's grounded, like he's not going to slip over the side. And when Tubbo yells for him to hurry up, Rambu turns away from the overlook with a smile. From what Rambu's seen so far, Apidae is absolutely gorgeous, such a stark counterpart to the dark, frozen deserts of Anwil. And he really, really likes it. All the vegetation and the sun baking molten onto his skin. The colors, and the quiet, and the gentleness of the land itself. Wonders if it would ever be possible to stay, if there's a way he could carve out a small place for himself here. What a sight you'd make, he thinks with a snort but it's more fond amusement at his line of thought rather than derision. In her monologue lulled by the piece here as well. Tall piece of shadow looming over all these little sunspots, don't be stupid. Any calm he's found evaporates, though, as Tubbo comes to a stop outside a little yellow-walled house with a narrow front porch. Big baskets of some orange flowering thing Rambu doesn't have a name for sitting beside the faded blue door and it feels like something tickles at his neck. This is it. Showtime. Be nice. Be polite. Be normal. For the honor of the ancestors, watch your damn mouth. You ready? Tubbo asks where they stand by the picket fence. Which is a bit redundant, because Rambu doesn't really have a choice now, does he? 
He's here, and can't exactly leave. He swallows hard, to get rid of the sensation of something wrapped around his throat, and nods his head. Stands up a little straighter and tries to comb his hair into something sensible, but it's too long now. Falls back into his eyes almost immediately. It never behaves like he wants it to, but he's loath to cut it. Feels vicious pride whenever he sees how long it's gotten. Knows his father would be indignant. Maliri furious. And it's small and stupid, but it's his little rebellion. A subconscious fuck you to them, and that life they tried to make him live. Has his shoulders settling more comfortably as they walk up the garden path. Tabo doesn't bother knocking when they go to the front door. Just twists the knob and walks straight in, calling out a greeting and almost instantly. There's the sound of nails skittering sharp on the worn wooden floorboards, a blurry black and yellow shape flying out of a nearby room. Benson! Tabo cries in delight, tumbling to the floor as the Bombini attacks him, miniature wings on its back beating erratically while it licks him relentlessly. And Tabo slaps a hand out until he finds Ronbu, tugs at him so he'll bend down as well. Benson, come say hi to Boo! Benson seems more than eager to launch himself at Rambu, and he weighs more than Rambu was expecting. Knocks him on his ass as the Bombini wiggles into his lap, making a strange, buzzing, barking sound as he personally attempts to give Rambu a bath. Bo, you're home! I... Queen's past, Benson! You wretched thing, stop! A laughing voice orders, and around Benson's pointy ears, Rambu can see a woman dusting her hands off on an apron curly antenna bouncing down into her eyes, hair tucked back in a long braid and framing an impish face he'd recognize anywhere as she clicks her tongue at Benson. Get off him, you silly thing. That's not how we treat guests. Ama! Tubbo calls, scrambling up and throwing himself at his mother. And Rambu tries not to stare as they embrace. How one set of her hands goes around his back and the others come up to cup his face both of them leaning in to brush their antenna together. He's knocked back into his memories hard, then. Finds himself sitting on the cargo ramp on Jayuet. The hell he can never seem to escape. The one he doesn't want to. Bright outline of his hands on his face as Tebo leans in. Ticklish sensation of his antenna dragging over his horns. How Ronbu eventually gave up and tried to nuzzle him back. Something that didn't really work but made him trill deep in his chest regardless. And traitorous thing that it is, the door that glows with sunlight and hopeless dreams starts to crack open, seeing how Tubbo greets his mother. Dangerous whispers telling Ronbu that he's special, that Tubbo didn't do that with Sneak, someone he's known longer, someone not as horrible as him, but that he greeted Ronbu like this multiple times, in the way he'll only greet his mother doesn't mean anything. Overthinking. Fantasies and delusions and parasocial relationships you're projecting. He does care, but not like that. Never like that. Not family. Not caryads. Doesn't love you. Oh! Ama, come here. I want to introduce you to someone. Rambu hears Tubbo say, and his heart drops out of him. Gotta behave. Know how to behave. Don't fuck this up. Be good. Be better. Don't be yourself. Be normal. He ducks behind Benson's wiggling ears quick and takes a deep breath before getting to his feet. Pleasant mask on his face as he straightens up to his full height, heels clicked together and hands folded politely behind his back. Back straight, chin level, don't move your feet. Keep your claws out of sight. Even and pleasant smile, no fangs. He hears her reprimand in his ears. Almost sees her go striding past, but gets distracted as Tubbo comes forward with his mother. Waits patiently until he gives the introductions. Ama, this is Rambu, my partner. And Rambu, this is my mother, Sisson. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Underscore. Thank you for allowing me to stay in your home. Rambu says, smoothly and mild. Unlatches one hand and brings it up to his chest in a fist as he bows to her informally. Realizes too late that he still has his sunglasses on, and freezes, straightening back up. Mind shifting fast into overdrive, trying to figure out how to correct the slight, how to make it up to her. 
but he's got nothing to offer her. Lost all your connections at court. Salary you make isn't enough to buy jewelry or expensive wines or for a bribe. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you... It's wonderful to meet you too, Ronvu. And really, you can call me Sisson, I don't mind. She says gently, tone of voice reminding him of, Stay with me, Boo. Not leaving you again, promise. And he glances up in trepidation, sees a heart-achingly familiar smile. Dimples in her cheeks, too. And Rambu unwinds, voice a little busted, when he whispers, Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Undersc- Sisson laughs fondly, left set of arms still draped around Tubbo that she uses to drag him in with, another hand coming up to ruffle at his hair. My, aren't you polite? So different to this one, huh? Hey, I'm plenty polite, yeah? Then how come you haven't offered to get our guest's bag, hmm? Sisson needles, playfully. Has Tubbo stuck in something that looks more like a headlock as she rakes his hair down into his eyes, ignoring his whining protests, and clicks her tongue. How can you even see anything with all this? Do they not have scissors at the syndicate? Do I need to send you some? Queen's past. Arma, stop. Tubbo laughs, finally ducking out of her hold and shakes his hair out of his eyes, points an accusing finger at Rambu, and says, Get on to him! His hair's way longer! Rambu looks at her quickly, in alarm, suddenly glad for his sunglasses so no one can see the way his eyes go wide in panic. And he forces himself still as Sisson's gaze flicks to him, heart thundering loud in his ears, terrified over what she's going to say. How her face will contort in knowing scorn, mouth opening to say, you're right. What a disgrace. What a failure. Can't even keep up his appearances. Reflects badly on his family. A mist Rambu looks distinguished. You just look like a ragamuffin. Sisson declares loftily. One set of hands braced on her hips, and the others folded across her chest while she nods decisively. Tubbo sputtering in the background. This is Blatant favoritism, and he's only been here for six minutes. And yet, you still haven't taken his bag. Sisson turns away from Rambu to better fuss at Tubbo. And with no one looking at him, Rambu lets his posture droop in exhaustion. Anxieties rolling under his skin and making his hands shake. But he forces them still when Tubbo turns to him in exasperation. Okay, fine. Queen's pass. Boo, give me a stupid bag. Tebo bitches half-heartedly, one hand held out in his direction, and Rambu only waffles for a minute, scared of being seen as entitled, but Sisson specifically wants Tubbo to do this, and he doesn't want to offend her. And that's what wins out as he slides his duffel off of his shoulder and hands it over. Tubbo takes it without further complaint, but does roll his eyes at the snarky grin his mother is giving him, nods his head down a hallway. All right, well, if you're done harassing me, I think we're probably going to go nap or something. Flight was long. Grin melting into something more fond, Sisson steps up and touches him lightly on the face, antenna twitching out to brush at Tubbo's briefly. I'm never done harassing you, but go get some rest, Mede. Amote. Ete amote. Tubbo says softly, apian flowing smooth and warm out of his mouth. And before today, Rambu hasn't really heard him speak it much. But he's really liked hearing it. Something about the language gentle and kind, and nothing like the sharp clicks and warping echoes of Endyrion. Stacking up the comparisons between here and Anwil only serves to make Rambu feel more out of place, and he shakily waves by to Sisson, follows after Tubbo and slides his sunglasses up into his hair, claws picking distractedly at his bracelet. He said it was okay that you're here, that he wanted you to come. She told you to call her by her given name, that it was wonderful to meet you. Rambu reminds himself as Tubbo opens what has to be his bedroom door, and Rambu hesitates at the threshold. Remember, you are not your family. Before cautiously stepping into the room, quickly scans the small space. Only one door in, window too small for you to get out, or for anyone else to get in. Bases covered then. Eyes flicking, then, to decor, and the things scattered about, cluttered, but clean. No one really lives here anymore, but it was once well lived in. Blinks at the colorful hammock strung up between two sturdy beams. 
Huh, interesting. Personal choice or cultural difference? Haven't slept in something like that before. Wonder what it's like. Impolite to ask. Keep your mouth shut. Well, this is you, I guess. Tevo says from the other side of his bedroom, dumping Ronbu's duffel down on a pallet spread out on the floor. Patchwork quilts folded on top, an entire array of pillows mounded on it that has Ronbu's tail wagging once in excitement. Sorry, we don't really have the space for a spare hammock. Cultural difference, then. Wonder where it came from. Ronbu notes down enthusiastically, mind already working to fit what he knows together, trying to come up with a feasible hypothesis. And he turns to start asking Tubbo questions, but sees the way his eyes droop and smiles softly. Later, then, he's dead tired. Must be like at HQ, now that he's here, he's about to drop. It'll be fine. Thank you, though. Ronbu tells him gently, shuffles forward, mindful of not clipping his horn's horn on any low hanging beams, and reaches out, slides Tubbo's duffel strap off his shoulder, nudging him in the direction of his hammock. Go get some sleep, Bo. Okay. He says around a yawn, fist scrubbing into an eye as he tumbles into the hammock, still with his jacket and boots on. Why does he always do this? Takes two minutes. Rambu huffs affectionately, and starts unlacing his shoes, tugs them and his socks off, and for lack of a better spot, leaves them lined up neatly by the door. Tubbo doesn't stir through the whole process, is asleep with his legs hanging over the side, and Rambu grabs them around his knees, slings them into the hammock and snorts as it sways back and forth wildly. Tubbo cuddled up in the center, hugging a pillow. Dork. Rambu mutters lovingly, kicks his own boots off as he flops down on the pallet, happily worming into the mound of pillows and blankets. Sighs, because this is a lot nicer than his bunk at HQ. He fishes his hollow tablet out of his duffel, finds the book on Homeolo he's been reading, and settles in for what'll probably be a good hour or so. Gets lost, learning about the seas of glittering liquid metals and living beings that look like rock formations. Widely considered to be one of the rarest instances of geobiological beings in the galaxy, Homeolo and its unique fauna have become a recent interest by many intrepid explorers and sightseers. As of now, there are no known sentient life forms on the planet, but further research must be done, taking into account how many biologists have had to redefine what is considered organic life after discovering the planet. At some point, Rambu hears a faint snuffling noise, and he immediately snaps out of his reading. Waits a breath, but when it comes again, a little louder, a little more distressed, he gets to his feet quietly, pads across the floor. Tabo never really moves around a lot in his sleep, but when Ronbu peeks into the hammock, sees the pinched set to his brows, how his eyes flicker behind his eyelids, he quickly slides a hand across one of his arms. It usually works at calming Tubbo fairly easily, but he's still got his jacket on, must not be able to really feel Rambu's fingers, and he whimpers in his sleep, chest heaving like he's in pain, and Rambu panics, touches him gently on the cheek. He runs his fingertip in careful sweeps under Tubbo's eye, across his cheekbone and into the hair at the nape of his neck, scratches lightly, and sighs when Tubbo unwinds, expression smoothing out again. Rambu goes to move his hand away, mindful of not violating any boundaries. But then Tubbo whispers out something in his sleep, and Rambu freezes where he is, pulse rocketing up and almost making him pass out, hearing Tubbo mumble, Boo. My boo. His hand tremors, fighting the urge to cradle the back of Tubbo's head run his thumb along his cheek, needs to pull away, has to pull away, can't pull away. And Tubbo unconsciously makes that choice for him, wiggling back so Rambu's fingers are splayed out through his hair, exhales like he's never been more content. Ancients, I love you so much, sunshine. Rambu whispers hoarsely in Endyrian, isn't strong enough to stop himself carting careful claws through Tubbo's messy curls, throat burning hot with emotions as he all but begs. 
wish you could love me as much as I love you. You're it for me, Bo. You've always been it. And it's wrong. And he should stop. But Rambu has always been weak. Stays leaned up against a beam and pets through Tubbo's hair while he naps. Knows, with sinking despair, that this memory is going up there along with those nights on Jiayuet. But just for now, he can convince himself it's okay to pretend like he's loved. <laughs>